in the first session, I actually just try to educate my clients uh, and, and whoever's listening to the workshops, really, that you can actually do a lot with just a minute of breathing because that ties into what we can do throughout the day to ensure that we are maintaining our body. Because you see, a lot of us, we, we think of exercising as kind of a one hour thing that we do to, to get it off the checklist. I might do meditation for an hour. I might do some stretching before I go to bed. But what I'm trying to share, the message that I'm trying to share is that you could do breathing practice throughout the day. Are you curious about discovering ways of making your life better? Then welcome to my podcast. I'm Bob Nickman, and this is The Exploding Human. Listen in while I talk with all kinds of people in the fields of personal growth, health and healing, alternative therapies, psychology, spirituality, environment, and the future. I'm looking for those answers that make life better for everyone. You'll meet cutting-edge practitioners, doctors, artists, filmmakers, business people, and those who have overcome challenges. The brave, the curious, anyone who's out there helping us humans to explore, expand, and explode. Hey, welcome to The Exploding Human. My name is Bob Nickman. My guest today is Andy T. Chu Chan. And we're going to be talking about fitness and the intersection between that and Chinese medicine. But first, I'd like to invite you to visit my website, theexplodinghuman.com. Over there, you can listen to episodes, read synopses, see photos of my guests, a little bio on myself. There's a donate button if you'd like to support the show through Patreon. Thank you very much. There's also a YouTube channel where you can listen, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman and The Exploding Human Facebook page. As I said today, my guest is Andy Chan, Andy T. Chu Chan, and Andy is a really interesting guy. He spent 10 years in the United States, and he now lives in Hong Kong. Andy draws on his master's degree in exercise science and is influenced by Chinese medicine. We talk a lot about the ideal ways to exercise and integrate with the mind-body experience, movement, balance, fluidity, all kinds of holistic approaches to exercise and fitness. Andy is a really interesting dude, and uh, so let's go over to Hong Kong and talk to Andy. You're in Hong Kong, and it's 7.30 in the morning from what I'm understanding. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to you from the future, Bob. So hello, everyone from Hong Kong, and it's 7.30 a.m. here, and I'm speaking to Bob, which is where, where are you uh, doing the Zoom call from? I am in Los Angeles, California. Oh, perfect weather. Love. I, I mean, I, I love LA. I love LA. Yeah. And you lived in, did you live in Los Angeles when you lived here? I didn't, but I, uh, my younger brother was uh, in, in UCLA for four years. So I, I get to visit him uh, during breaks and stuff. And, you know, it's always fun out there, you know, walking along the beach and having nice tacos and, and, oh, okay. and yeah, so it was just an enjoyable life. You've had the LA experience. All right. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. And my daughter goes to UCLA. So, you know, we have a little bit oh. in common there. Yeah. Uh, now, let's, t you know, I don't do a lot of fitness people on this show, and I probably should do more. I'm just, I don't, I move in, in, in a lot of different worlds, and I love, I love the idea of being fit, and I exercise, uh, and, and I exercise probably six days a week. Um, and I've developed over the years certain things that work for me, but I want to talk about what you do. Uh, and I, I know you have uh, a lot of training and you've combined it with some Chinese traditional medicine. So just tell me all about this because it's pretty damn fascinating, I have to say. Yeah, well, I, well, actually, you know, right right before we, we started uh, hitting, well, right before we hit the record button for this podcast, we're on this, uh, I was just having a chat with Bob and he was telling me about how the reason why he started this podcast was to kind of unpack the overwhelming amount of information out there because you know these days if you look online just search anything uh, in relation to health and fitness and wellness you can find a plethora uh, of information out there and you know the problem is the amount of information out there really hinders someone's desire to even begin because it's like you know, where, where where do i start you know and and so it's the same thing in fitness i think there's just so many methodologies out there 
that I, I now tell people my job really is to break down and dissimulate all this information so that no one has to waste time implementing practices that ultimately hinders or hurts their performance, but they can actually you know, implement a, an efficient routine that could get them towards their goals and which is to ultimately strive uh, in terms of human performance and, and ultimately health. So that's what I do. I, I do personal training. I do group training. I now do corporate workshops, webinars, just about everything that you can imagine. So if somebody wants to, let's just plug this, your webinars, because I love this idea that you can learn online. I mean, I'm talking to Hong Kong right now. How cool is that? How do I, if I wanted to go to one of your webinars, how would I find that? Yeah, well, currently uh, for the webinars, I only do it for corporate. So usually someone will get in touch with me and we'll organize oh. a time. And, and you know, after this podcast or after reading my book, if anyone's interested, just just email uh, just email me and we can go from there. Okay. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. I mean, sometimes I think technology really is just amazing. I mean, during the pandemic, I did a webinar for one of the largest companies here. And, you know, sitting there with just a webcam, you know, I was at, at the company that I was delivering the, the webinar for. And after the webinar, the, the staff told me that there were 500 people listening. And obviously for me, there was only a webcam. I mean, it's not like in Zoom where you could see the number of participants at least, yeah. but the, the, the software that they used, I could only see the webcam. So, um, but <laughs> technology is indeed fascinating because people can listen anywhere, just like a podcast. I love the fact that a company is w w willing to hire somebody about fitness. I think that is just so great. I think the world is evolving, really. And, and I think that people realize that there is a need to kind of look into fitness because ultimately better fitness will lead to better health, better health will lead to better, happy employees, and you're going to have better work rate anyway. So, you know, the first pitch, if you will, that I always tell companies is ultimately, you know, I'm not doing this. Well, of course, for my own benefit, but also for your benefit. And we can influence hundreds of people at a time just by sharing a simple message. So I think it's a great investment in, in, from my point of view. The, the basic idea to me is people feel better. The medical costs go down because they're more fit. So, and so their work product work productivity goes up. So it's in, in the interest of a company to have their employees be physically fit. It's, it's, it's uh, more productive and better, uh, lower uh, health costs, right, right there, bottom line money. You're absolutely right. You also read the returns is a lot higher than what you put in. You know, I feel so much better when I exercise and when I don't, I'm a, I'm a pissy guy. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm tense and I'm, I'm my, my temper's quicker. And when I just, even if it's to take a walk for 30 minutes, it's very different. Uh, how my mind is my mind, not just my body, but my mind is different. And I don't know if it's endorphins. It's probably part of it. It's just, you know, what goes on physiologically. Yeah, but but before I, I explain kind of the physiological side of exercise, I do want to remind or I guess um, tell the audience or whoever is listening that this this episode is way more than just exercise because I, I kind yes. of want to go into the holistic lifestyle because a lot of times, you know, believe it or not, whenever I do these interviews or whenever we do webinar or, or public speaking gig, right, I'll go on and people will say, oh, he's a fitness instructor. And then there will be this perception or this assumption that I'm going to talk about how exercise is so great. You should do it five times a day. You should kill yourself and you should eat only chicken and eat salad. Uh, but I, I, I can tell you that this is not going to be the podcast today uh, because I, I believe that we are meant to live a better lifestyle than just eating plain chicken and salads all day. Cause that's just disgusting. In my opinion, no offense to anyone who enjoys chicken breasts and uh, plain salad, <laughs> but, but I, 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 to back to your question, I think when, when it comes to exercising, you know, we, uh, I honestly believe that the way that we're approaching it has been wrong over the past 20 years, because for most of us, when we think about exercising, we'll think about perhaps treadmills, we'll think about elliptical machines, or we might think about these big bulky machines that we get to work on different muscle parts like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? We, we, we want to be huge and Hercules yeah. looking. Uh, but, you know, if you think about it from a historical context, exercise has always been functional. 
So, you know, most people, when you talk to them, they're like, oh, I want to exercise, but I just can't, my, I cannot get my butt off the chair. Or, you know, I just want to sit in the couch. Once I'm on a couch, I'll never leave the couch. And, and turns out that's biological because, you know, if there's no purpose to whatever you're doing, then why are you doing it? There's, your body will, just won't be inclined to do it. And the fact that you have to be on a treadmill, brainlessly walking, running for 40 minutes, I, I just don't see how that, that would be appealing to anyone. Whereas if you think of exercising as, as kind of a necessity in order for you to achieve something, for example, if you are signing up for a competition, if you kind of have, um, if you do some sports and you want to train to be a better athlete, if there is a goal and there's a function to the gym, then you're more likely to go and, and exercise. It will be more purposeful. And in turn, you're actually going to do it because it gives you meaning. Well, I like that idea because I always never had a problem with running when I was playing basketball and run back and forth because it was fun, but you, you can't pay me to run. I, I hate it. I, if you say go run down there and come back, I'm like, why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I won't do it. So I get that. Here's a question I've always had about exercise. And I don't know why I've never asked it. When you hear about um, the recommendation of reps, do eight reps, do eight reps three times. How do you, who, who figures this stuff out and does it work? And is it, is it a really a thing? Cause I, I, I don't, it just seems sort of odd to me. I don't under, I never understood it. And I never understood how somebody decided what the number was. Well, well, Bob, I think you asked a fascinating question because this question is being debated over the past two, three years. This is like the question to debate within the exercise science oh, world. Oh, okay. Well, good for and me. Just, just, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> what, hey, you know, without being in the industry, you're already leading uh, by asking these questions because most people are just brainlessly following the instructions. And that is just a bit of background story. Uh, back when people do their personal training certifications, most people will have learned of this thing called the repetition continuum. Essentially, it is a chart or a table that tells you if you do three to five repetitions, you're going to work on your maximum strength. And if you do reps eight to 12, you're going to work on hypertrophy, which is building muscle. And if you work on 12 to 15 or all the way up to 20, 30, you're building endurance. And back then, most people believe that you have to stick to the repetition because if you do five, you're only going to build strength and you're not going to build muscle size. And, 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 and I found that a lot of these things are almost like brainwashing because if, let's say if 10 trainers tell you the same thing, you're going to tend to think that that's the truth. But uh, no one has really questioned uh, the efficacy or, or really the validity of, of this continuum. And so exercise scientists has kind of looked into this continuum. And what they found was that actually this continuum is only partially true because any exercises, any amount of repetition that you do will elicit a physiological response from the body. So to say that, oh, if you want to build muscle, you must stay in the eight to 12 rep repetition range is false, um, really, because you could do five and still build muscle. Why do I want to build muscle? Just to look better? I, I'm not sure. I lift stuff. I mean, couldn't I just be lifting stuff all day for my job and I'm building muscle? Yeah, uh, that's another fantastic comment. Um, and you are absolutely right, Bob. First of all, exercise, it's it's a natural in a, in a thing that we do, that we have been doing. We, you know, we lift stuff off the ground. So we lift kids off the ground. We play with different people. We play sports. And, and the problem is in, in the health and fitness industry, it's marketed so that you have to go to the gym in order to, yeah. to seem like you're exercising. And, and I, although that's kind of my main source of income, I would say that's not true because, you know, it's, again, it goes back to, we're never meant to just be stuck inside the gym for hours and hours in, in, in a week. We're meant to roam around, walk around, go buy groceries, go do physical activity. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think that the gym, if you have no other physical activity, the gym is a great substitute and you can be very focused on what you work inside the gym. But everyone must know that the gym is not the only means to exercising because you could be walking, you could be hiking, uh, you could be swimming, you could be doing a lot of things and, and that would be fine. Yeah, that's, that's how I feel. I mean, I like to incorporate a, a few different things. And one of the things that I do a lot of in my exercise, if I want to call it exercise, is um, I do a lot of stretching. I do back bends on a ball. 
I do some yoga poses and, um, you know, different things to my hamstrings and, and just, you know, things that, um, I, and I, I sort of look at it as a function of getting older that I, if I'm loose, I'm going to feel better. I, I'm not really interested in muscle mass and never have been. Uh, but I do like the idea of having energy and being limber, which is, I think a lot of people that work out with the, certainly with free weights, you know, they're bulky, but you know, they, you know, like their head is attached to their shoulders and they don't have a neck. <laughs> it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. And I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated because it seems like you, you kind of know my training philosophy, you know, and you're asking the right questions. And yeah, I don't, and you said, just, this is just my, my idea of it. Over yeah. The years, I'm, I'm, no, this is, this is, this is perfect. I mean, it's perfect that way to, you put on a plate for me to <laughs> you ask the very question. So basically, you're absolutely right that, uh, you know, we, we in the beginning of the interview, I, I talked about how perhaps the way that we've been working out has been counterintuitive to what we're supposed to do because a lot of us are trained to be early. So, you know, we want to be bulky. We want to be like the rock. And <laughs> and yet, uh, as, as, as you said, a lot of people that you see these these massive dudes or or or, or, or women that you see uh, on the streets, they tend to be a bit stiff and they tend to be rigid, and we know that they're not going to be the best athletes because you put them out on on the on, on the track, you know, they're going to be so slow. Which brings me to the first point, and that is strength and size are different, right? Mm, if yeah. you think about an MMA fighter, if you think about a boxer, you know they they are limber, they're 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 skinny, uh, yet. When, you know, when they punch, you're going to be knocked out because they're so strong. So first of all, we have to recognize that there's a difference just because you look like you're buff. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are strong per se uh, from a functional perspective. And and the, to the second point, which is, uh, which is a key point I think we should uh, discuss further is the idea of stretching. And a lot of, you know, modern people uh, in, in the modern society know that we're stiff. And so as a result, they go into stretching and what's the, what's the most common type of stretching that they do? Well, they'll sit there and they'll try to touch their toes and they'll hold for an extended period, period of time. Um, but, but today I actually want to bring awareness to the mental aspect of it, because the thing is, a lot of us, when we stretch, we have been taught to relax or breathe into it. Uh, but we don't, we, we, we don't really understand why. And, and I always believe that when you don't understand the why it, it will be hard for you to kind of implement because you don't understand the importance of it. But here's why it's important, obviously, to hear all that to say. And when, whenever we think of the nervous system, we have to understand two basic responses. One is the fight or flight response, and second is the rest and digest. So if you think about the fight or flight, uh, in case if you don't know, think about 5,000 years ago, if you are enjoying your meal under a tree or something, a lion or a bear might just show up randomly. And when the predator shows up, you have two options. You either fight it hand to hand or you run away from it as fast as you can. So you can imagine in this state, the body has to be primed into quick action. So it has to stiffen up, it has to be rigid, blood flow has to go into the muscles and our digestive system, it shuts off temporary so that other parts of the body can utilize different resources. And you can imagine from a, a physical point of view, my muscles, my soft tissues, it tightens up because I have to produce force rapidly. I have to dash out, I have to fight the predators as, uh, as quickly as possible. And so in this response, we're going to be rigid and tight. Okay, so that's the first um, fight or flight response. Now the second, rest and digest. As the name suggests, this is the state where we calm down and we downregulate. So our heartbeat slows down, our muscles become softer and pliable, and this is where the state of recovery happens. You know, this is where the body repairs itself and we digest the food that we we consume. Okay, so why is this relevant? If you think about the modern lifestyle, most of us are stressed all day, and then whenever we're stretching, we we fight against ourselves because we're like, oh, I gotta touch my toes, I gotta touch my toes, and then you you hold there and you're like. Ugh. But if you don't elicit this rest and digest response from the body, your muscles will not loosen up. And so however many stretching work that you do will not reverse the rigid movement that you produce. So um, all that to say, if today indeed you do think that you're quite rigid and stiff as a result of sitting, you have to understand that our, phys our physiological uh, body is driven by 
our mental health and our mental well-being because those two are intricately linked. I I have certain times when I'm exercising and I'm doing the first thing that you're talking about, which was is like you know I'm I'm trying to do something and I'm not in, I'm not in the moment at all, and then I have to remind myself why one why am I in a hurry to do this thing? Maybe it's better to do it slower, and maybe I need to. Um, think about what I'm doing rather than just doing it as, oh, the goal is we'll just pick the toe touching. The goal is to touch the toes. Well, what if I don't touch the toes and I'm, but I'm breathing into it and I'm paying attention to my back muscles and, and my, the behind my legs, I can't remember, hamstrings and, um, and my shoulder muscles and I'm relaxing that stuff. And all of a sudden now I'm stretching easily uh, with much less effort and I'm going further because I'm breathing kind of into it. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's like, there's a meditation piece almost to having more success at it. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, even if you think, if you, you mentioned, you briefly mentioned yoga, right. And yeah. you know, yoga started out as a breathing practice because they, they, the Indians or actually most ancient cultures, they understood that there's a lot of power to your breath because the way you breathe would directly elicit, uh, would, would either upregulate or downregulate the system depending on how, or on how you go about it. So, you know, that that's the first thing. That's the first thing that we should pay attention to whenever we do any stretching work or even training. Yeah. Is that how you start people off with, with the breath? Yep. Uh, because the, the breath ha- is so powerful, you could be, I don't know where you're listening to this episode from right now, but let's say if you're driving, you, know, you, could, you certainly could, could try this for yourself because let's say I, I assume that you'll be sitting when you're listening to this podcast and you just take some rapid breaths like through your mouth like this. <laughs> so you can do this for, I don't know, 10 seconds, 20 seconds. <laughs> And yeah. just kind of remember this feeling right now. And, and the second one that you can do is more of a deep breathing where you're going to sit upright in an open posture. So now you give yourself a bit more space and you're going to try to breathe in through the nose for five seconds in and then five seconds out. And then try to record that feeling. And the chances are you see a massive difference between the two. And, and in the first session, I actually just try to educate my clients uh, and, and whoever's listening to the workshops really that you can actually do a lot with just a minute of breathing because that ties into what we can do throughout the day to ensure that we are maintaining our body. Because you see, a lot of us, we, we think of exercising as kind of a one hour thing that we do to, to yeah. get it off the checklist. I might do meditation for an hour. I might do some stretching before I go to bed. But what I'm trying to share, the message that I'm trying to share is that you could do breathing practice throughout the day. And here's where, here's when I would do it. One, when I'm waiting for the elevator or when, when I'm waiting for the Uber, when I'm waiting for the taxi, because that gives me at least five minutes just to downregulate, especially because my job, I have a quite, quite a, I have to be quite hyper when I work because I have to give out a lot of energy to inspire others. So I, so I need to calm down myself. And that's the first. Second is before my meals. Because again, just now we talked about how the, the mental state is intricately like with other parts of the body, our digestive system, it shuts off or it's temporary kind of pause whenever we are stressed. So I do breathing practices before my meals, just so that I, I'm not stressed when I'm eating. Cause whenever we're angry and pissed off when, when we're eating, uh, it's going to impact our digestive health. And then I just try to do it in between my sessions and whenever I can, because if you think about our bodies, we're constantly upregulated. So we're always stressed, 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 triggered, triggered, especially in the American society. Uh, if you go on the news, you're triggered, triggered, triggered. So what we, what we ought to do is to really find space and, you know, uh, gaps between our schedule to downregulate and to calm down. And there's nothing better to do than breathing. So that's what I usually start people off with. I've always wondered when, cause, cause I've been given a variety of instruction with breathing and exercise and, you know, when do you breathe in uh, on what part of the motion? When do you breathe out? And is it in the nose, out the mouth? Is it the other way around? Is it only through the nose? I mean, there's so many ways to, to breathe. And the mm-hmm. rule of thumb is usually you want to exhale when you are exerting power mm-hmm. because say today I'm trying to throw a baseball in order to throw that baseball, 
my spine has to stabilize itself, right? If, if, you're, if you're not stable in the spine in the central region known as the core, then you will not be able to produce power. And if you think about breathing in, whenever you breathe in, there's a lot of air going into your body. So with that much air in it, you're going to feel a bit unstable because air, we know it's not solid. So that's why we need to exhale because when you exhale out, it's, it's much more solid. And when the core is solid, it allows you to produce force. So that's, that's why we exhale whenever we produce force. Yeah. It, well, you know, there's more energy in screaming than there is in gasping. <laughs> Just- <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> It feels good to scream. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I, I I found that that works better in America just because the, the parts that I was in. So I was in America for 10 years and, and yeah. I, I tend to be in small towns and there weren't that many people in town, you know, usually 2,000, 3,000 people in the towns that I went to school in. And here in my apartment building, there are more than like 2,000 people already. So, so screaming just doesn't work well in Hong Kong because you scream out and it's, everyone's going to look at you. Whereas, yeah. you know, if you go into the States, you scream, no one's going to look at you because there's no. no one around you. <laughs> well, come on by and scream anytime yeah. you want. We'd love yeah. to have you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about core for a second because uh, basically Pilates saved me. I have to say I was having a lot of lower back issues for a lot of years And I did not have much core strength. And somebody said, oh, you should go do Pilates. So I did. I did it for about two years, learned a bunch of great techniques. Uh, I do it on my own now, a lot of core strength stuff. It's really helped me. It it made me feel so strong in the way that, um, in a good way, you know, where I was like, um, my back issues went away. Um, I had some knee issues also went away. I mean, I mean, there was so much st- where I was headed physically was not a good place until I started doing that really was, was a great thing. Well, first of all, I think it's awesome that you're doing Pilates because I, I think body weight movement training, it's, it's the way to go. Cause again, I think if, you know, Pilates has been around for a long time and for something that can endure through, through that period of time, you know, it's definitely good for you. And, and the second part, why I think it's great for you is because it is a movement based training methodology, meaning, you know, if you look at the Pilates instructors or, or, or people who are passionate about Pilates, when they move, they move with such elegance and grace, right? You look at, I'm sure when you first did the class and you look at the instructor, you're probably like, Oh, how can I do this movement? Because when they do it, it's just so graceful and very fluid and and there's yeah, very fluid. And, and this actually goes, ties back to the training philosophy that I implement. And that is, well, we should actually, it doesn't matter what we do inside the gym. We should actually train to be more fluid because the best athletes, the best movers are the ones who can, who, who can produce fluid movements. I mean, you look at, you know, LeBron James, Serena Williams, you know, they're strong, but yet when they move, they move with elegance and grace. And so I think Pilates will, will fall under the umbrella and, and everyone should kind of do something along the lines of training for, uh, elegant movement and better fluidity when they move. I remember when I was a kid uh, or when my kids were kids, we were watching Mr. Rogers and he had on a football player that was taking ballet classes, big NFL, uh, you know, uh, wide receiver. And he was taking uh, ballet classes. It was really cool. And, you know, you'd see, you could see those guys, you know, when you see those, those receivers, they're like, they are like ballerinas, you know, or, what do you call yeah. a guy ballerina? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, the dude. way that they're doing all their acrobatics in, in midair and they're doing flips. And I'm pretty sure Tom, Tom Brady he does some body work. I'm pretty sure he doesn't just do the regular um, gym training that, that people commonly associate with. Because, I mean, he he's had a long career. And, and yeah, we know that basically being rigid and stiff and really bulky, it gets you nowhere. How do you feel about... Um, the, the best way to heal from a, from an injury, whether it's uh, sports induced or exercise induced or inj- you know, body repair is, is, do you have some techniques for, for that, that you like to talk about? Well, I, I think injury is, is a difficult topic for, for me to get into just because of the complicated nature of it. But what, what I can okay. talk about is ways that we can come from a, from a preventative medicine okay, point of view. Great, great. And, and, and because we, we want to kind of minimize our likelihood of, of being there. And, and, and actually this, I, I 
recently wrote a book. I published a book called Diet Balance. And in, in the book, we extensively talk about a philosophy that centers around prevent, preventative medicine. And that is Chinese medicine because uh, Chinese medicine has been around for thousands of years. And essentially their philosophy is, you know, how can we better take care of their body so that we can minimize our likelihood of injury? And and actually I can, I can tell you that it's a lot of things that we had just talked about, right? It's, it's, doing exercises in the right way is making sure our emotions are in the right uh, right state of mind. And lastly is to make sure that we eat appropriately, meaning that we're eating according to how we're supposed to. And the reason why that is important is if you think about injury, we do know that majority of the injury now, I'm not even joking, majority of the injury now is a result of our lifestyle. So they're lifestyle diseases. And if we can take better care of our lifestyle, then we know that we can get the injury rate down. For example, most student athletes now, they sit in school, they sit in class for 10 hours a day, and then they go play football. And guess what? Kids, they don't warm up. Come on now. I mean, when do, when do you see a kid warming up? Because they, they don't really care. They just want to go out and scrimmage. And so you go from sitting there for a 10 hours, being in a stress state because you have all these information being thrown at you to, okay, let's scrimmage in, in football. And, and of course, the kids will be stiff, right? Because they've been sitting all day. Yeah, and, sure. and so the first thing that we can do is to have them be more mobile. Well, how do we do that? Well, again, it goes back to breathing and then doing some total body movements because things like dances, things like Pilates, yoga, things like Chigo, people have been doing it for thousands of years and they share the common, common uh, goal in that they're just looking for elegant movement after all, right? It's the same thing. I don't want to say it's the same thing because I'll piss off a lot of people, but, but the, the goal is to always search for a movement that is elegant and fluid. I'm just going to repeat the name of your book because you said it really fast. It's Dynamic Balance. Folks, if you want to get Dynamic Balance, is it on Amazon? I bet it is. Yeah, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Hudson, I think even Target, uh, as far as I know. But okay. yeah, anywhere books books are sold. Not flea markets because it's new. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. On, on Amazon, it says that they're used versions uh, available and I was oh. like, "Wow!" So someone, someone has finished reading. Uh, it, it came out in January. I so finished I, reading I guess... it, and I'm gonna sell it to somebody else because I got all the information. <laughs> yeah, they should I'll, be reading I'll... it twice because they no, there's no way to get information on one read. That's, yeah, especially exactly. This kind of stuff, you gonna have to go over it a couple times. I would imagine. Are there <laughs> illustrations in there for people like me who don't like to read? <laughs> well. I... I don't know how they they can sell a used version because the book is quite interactive. So there are multiple questionnaires in there because the the idea of us writing is, okay, it's 2022 and we know that books cannot be boring. All right. If the book is boring, you're just not going to read it. And and so we put in activities throughout the book where you could do questionnaires, you can practice, you have activities that you can do so that you you won't be bored, I promise. And second is it's quite down to earth. But with that said, I don't understand how they can sell the book because they would have written the lifestyle because we give you a questionnaire to figure out your, your current body state so that you know what to eat. Right. And, and, and so, you know, if they're selling the book, without filling out that questionnaire, then I, I doubt that they're making the most out of the book. So I, so somebody yeah. bought it and they, or they got it as a gift and they re get their re. I don't know. Maybe it's got stolen off the back of a truck. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> well, side, side topic, you know, some authors, they actually give out free, co- well, they, they, sometimes they will, they'll give out free 5,000 copies or they'll put it on bootleg websites because in their opinion, free downloads is better than no downloads. Um, but that's a separate topic of, of book marketing. Yeah. I don't know anything about that. Um, but I, I'm always learning something, you know, you get to learn about exercise with you and, but also marketing book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Book well, marketing. well, let me tell you, I, I think it's, 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 it's tough sometimes like uh, that over the past few months, you know, people have asked me, wow. So you published a book. Um, you're now trying to grow your influence in the U S and, where do you go from here? And then kind of what's your, what's your aspirations? And, and I tell them, I, I don't think that much because if you think about the fitness industry, it is competitive enough, right? Again, there's just so many fitness instructors. I'm sure within your personal circle, you probably know like 10 of them, including Pilates, Yoga, Body Works, whatever. And, and so I tell people that whenever you, you come from a mindset that you just want to outcompete everyone else. I, I think that's quite a negative mindset. Uh, whereas now I'm just trying to kind of promote 
practices and promote um, things that you can do throughout the day to actually change your lifestyle. Because I, I believe that people will, will receive the message a lot better and in turn, I'll get more opportunities. I have to agree with that. I just think, you know, you do what you th- think sincerely is is important and then everything else will fall into place as it's supposed to. You may not be the wealthiest man in the world, but you'll be doing the thing that's the most important for you. And that's that to me is, you know, that's why I do this thing. Yeah. And and that's kind of things that gives us fulfillment. And and I, I, I applaud you for doing it because I, I think you know, being a podcast host is certainly not easy. And you've been doing this for over two years now. You said that, I think you, yeah, about two, you mentioned years, briefly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's you know, the commitment and the dedication. It's fantastic. Yeah. The way I look at it is like, well, uh, let's say I'm a, a, I play guitar, but I'm not, you know, I'm not playing in bands and making money as a guitarist, but I love it. It's the same thing. You know, it's, it's just, you know, an artist is still going to paint uh, whether uh, it's the works hanging in a gallery or not. It, it's just, it comes from the inside and I like it. I just, I just absolutely love how many interesting people I've gotten to meet and gotten messages out there. And, you know, people come to me th- and want to be on my show. Like you're, you're, I don't know, I guess you have some sort of a marketing person or something. Yeah. I've like an agent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. An agent. Yeah. But there's like podcast agents now. It's really cool. And I love when the, you know, and, and it's like, uh, you know, and I get, I get good feedback from the guests with those people. And then they send me more people and it's like a community. There's this, there really is a whole community of people that are seekers and that are trying to do cool shit in the world. It's not uh, like we were talking about the news earlier. It's not all mayhem and chaos and negativity. There's, I think there's more people trying to do good shit than, than the other way by a lot that is you know heartwarming and you're absolutely right i mean you go on these podcasts and you listen to different podcast episodes of your previous guests and you realize that wow a lot of people are trying to contribute to the world yet you never hear about all these positive stuff on the news it's always this people kill that person that people disagree yeah. it's fake news it's the it's yeah it's just chaotic yeah. out there chaotic yeah instead of doing that stuff they should exercise <laughs> you yeah know, well, go, well well go help well, somebody actually, do something well, actually, a, a key, one of the tips that we give in dynamic, in dynamic balance is that we should embrace boredom because nowadays a lot of people cannot stand to be bored. And, and I believe that this is the driving cause of the reason why people are always stressed because let's say today, if you're just sitting at home after, after work, you're just sitting there chilling. The problem is, you're going to think that you're being unproductive with your time because yes, you, you're, yes. you're going to be uncomfortable. You're like, okay, I should turn on the TV or, or at least some, there should be some noise that, 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 that drives this house. But uh, what we're saying is, no, you should just embrace boredom because that's when recovery happens. And that's when you become a bit looser. Uh, and, and so you don't have to be a go-getter all the time, right? Like a lot of the podcast hosts that I've been talking to, a lot of people are trying to actively grow their podcast, which means they're doing 10 Instagram posts per day, you know, they're all doing all these outreach, uh, but really they're just kind of, I don't know, shooting themselves in the foot because they're just going to be uh, stressed out. And the problem with all these wasted effort is that there's no guarantees. So, um, which is why it goes back to, if you really like doing it, then I'm sure one day someone will, will find you and, and they'll find it. If you're genuinely passionate about a topic, people are going to like it because that's going to resonate. Yeah. And, and so embrace boredom is going to go a long way. Well, I'm so happy that you said that because there is that idea of, uh, constant uh, accomplishment and and, be, and there's a lot of shame around just f- for people to to not be doing something every second it's uh i guess they call it a race to nowhere really is what it is you're just you're just spinning for the sake of spinning it doesn't it doesn't make any sense uh, if you can't really you know let's say uh, where are you going where are you trying to get to let's and then when you get there then what are you going to do oh i'll relax in a year after i do uh, you know these 50,000 things it doesn't make sense it doesn't make any sense it doesn't first you're not going to relax when you get there and second you're not going to be able to actually do all these things <laughs> um. <laughs> i'm here i can't relax <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but but <laughs> But yeah, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. I think, um, 
I'm not sure if we talked about this yet, but I spent 10 years in the United States when I was in middle school, high school, and college. And so basically my life outlook is developed in the United States. And what I find uh, now that I'm back in, in Hong Kong, in, in this Chinese culture, is, is that there's this idea of the American dream, which is to pursue your passion. But the downside of it is, okay, let's talk about the upside. Obviously, the upside has brought America to where it is today with all the innovation and, and all the, all the life-changing technologies and innovations. Yet the downside of it is most people are stressed because there's this idea that we need to be go-getters. We need to go after our passion. Just you know, keep doing everything a lot. Just, just go at it hard and hustle, hustle, hustle. And, and, and I think that that contributes to all the stress levels that we're facing today. So if anything, I think most people, you just need to step back and realize that it is okay to be bored and it is okay not to be doing something every second because we're not meant to be stressed all day anyways. I don't think so. I just, it doesn't seem, if you just go back to when you're a child and, you know, in the, probably the most natural state you'll ever be, you know, you don't even think about that stuff. You just, you just are, and you're just doing stuff. You're not thinking about any of that stuff. You're just going, this is, feels good. This is nice. Oh, I just built this thing. Now I'm going to not do anything for a while. I'm going <laughs> to just, you know, I'm going to go outside. I'm going to lay in the grass, look up at the clouds. You know, I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't even cross your mind to be, and I know you're a kid and stuff and you don't have to, you know, make a living and stuff, but it, you really are in a, a much a bigger state of grace at that point. You I are. Think. And, and actually I, I, I would go a step further and I would say that when you find the right career, you're also going to find that peace of mind as well. Like for me, you know, I tell people sometimes I'm not sure whether I'm working or if I'm just having fun because I like people complain about going to work, but I, I, I think it's great that I get to do what I love every single day, talking to different people because that's essentially my job and then helping others. So to the example of a kid, a big part of a kid's life is to dream. Yeah. And, and here is the key. Whenever we're stressed, we're not going to dream. Random ideas comes to our mind when we're showering, when we're just kind of driving brainlessly in the car, when we're sitting in the car. Whenever we're stressed, no ideas come to our mind because we're, we're so focused on surviving because the, the fight or flight system is a survival mechanism, right? Because we just want to get things done. And, and so a, a, a valuable tip that you can think of or an advice that you could take it with you is that when you relax and when you just think about life, that's when great ideas come to you. And who knows, you might actually find your real passion if you haven't discovered it. And you you might also, you know, find some new ways to live life uh, rather than just being stressed all the time. And that's going to be life changing. Well, that's why I like to talk to folks like you, because we can always, you can never be reminded too much about why we're here and what, what, how, why we can live a, a certain way and it doesn't have to be like everybody else if we don't want to there's no there's no rules man it's all improv we can make it all up how the, what works i'm on the side of what works that's what i say and pay attention to what works let's um if let's say a company wants to uh find you is there is there a, an email or a website so we can find you Yep. So my website is www.tchu.com, my Chinese name, T-S-Z-C-H-I-U. That's my Chinese name in two characters, tchu.com. I'm also on social media uh, with my, uh, I'm on Instagram and my account is Andy. So T-S-Z-C-H-I-U, Andy. And yeah, feel free to send me a message. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys and we can go from there. Fantastic. I so appreciate your time and I know it's early over there. I'm going to go have dinner and you're going to have breakfast if there is such a thing for you. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had breakfast already. I'm going to have my second meal and then I'll have a great day after. And I'm sure you'd have a great night as well. I will. That's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> thanks well, so thanks much so for much your... for having me, Bob. Yeah, you're a good dude, man. Keep up the good work. I appreciate it. Thank you. Much appreciation for listening to The Exploding Human. Check out the website, theexplodinghuman.com. The YouTube channel, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman, and The Exploding Human Facebook page. Once again, big thanks to Andy T. Chu Chan. Please check out his book, Dynamic Balance. And happy exercising, folks. Have a great day. Thank you.